Good evening and welcome to Atlanta Live. And I'm your host, Nancy J. Lewis. And I'm here on the set with my first guest. We're just jumping right in with my first guest here, and we have Deborah Asbury. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, we have some great dialogue in the green room. So now we're out in the main room. Right. To get a chance to talk out here. So tell people a little bit about who you are, because you're doing a lot of different things, um, some exciting things. Well, I tell you, um, that's a loaded question. Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am originally from North Carolina. I've been in the metro Atlanta area for over 30 years. I um, have been in broadcasting, I guess, about 12 years now. I, I kind of, I was kind of into broadcasting before I got into it, actually through my church. Mm -hmm. I was uh, the chairperson of our singles ministry. And when I was preparing for the events for the upcoming year, this was back in like 03, mm -hmm. and I know a long time ago, and I just remember it came to my mind, let's do a talk show. Mm -hmm. And so I, along with a, a group of adult singles there, we mm -hmm. put together a talk show, and I just got the bug <laughs> for broadcasting right. and for, you know, talk show back then. And so uh, fast forward a couple years after that, I was uh, laid off my job in corporate America for about 20 years, and I went to broadcasting school. And the wonderful thing about it, when I finished broadcasting school, I did an internship at this station. Wow. And Man. then they hired me. You were so good, so we need to have her stay. Yes, I felt like that. It was such an honor, such an honor. So I worked here for about a year and a half, and um, I went back to my job in corporate America, and so that's been about 10 years ago, and, and here I am back again. I actually was doing a show here called uh, Living the Single Life, mm. and I started out with vignettes um, shortly after I uh, went back into corporate America. I was able to do vignettes. There were like three-minute um, mini shows. Mm -hmm. And then a few months later, I was able to produce 30-minute shows. So I did that um, for about four years. And so I went to seminary. Uh, I decided to take like a hiatus because I wanted to become um, more excellent. I wanted to perfect right. the gift and just to be, you know, just a more excellent servant as, and in the area of broadcasting, Christian broadcasting for the Lord. And I just felt like seminary would be that step mm -hmm. that would allow me to, you know, perform more excellent. I had the broadcasting um, certification and now in seminary, I have a Master's of Divinity. And so here I am, fast forward, no longer doing living the single life that addressed the issues and concerns <laughs> of the adult Christian singles. However, I am still single. <laughs> but um, the new show that's going to start on um, Wednesday, Wednesday, March 2nd, mm -hmm. 10 p.m., on this station, TV 57, it's called Kingdom One Live. Kingdom One Live. So how'd you come up with that name? Kingdom One Live. Well, the name of my production company is called Kingdom One Productions. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, it's all about a kingdom perspective, first Amen. of all. Yes. And so it's live. Kingdom One Live. God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Because we have dual citizenship. Yes. So we have uh, citizenship here, you know, in the natural. Here it's U.S. citizens and then citizens of heaven. And, and I tell you, it's limited benefits. <laughs> I mean, it's so exciting to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And so Kingdom One Live, it's all about a kingdom perspective. And it's all about, you know, interviewing ordinary people doing extraordinary <laughs> things. <laughs> You know all about that, yes, right? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. There's so much synergy we had. Yes. Uh, the similarities were just striking. Yes. Absolutely. And we just met. Yes. Isn't that something? But look at God. But God does amazing things. So amazing. But, you know, just talking um, so uh, about me, that's kind of, you know, fast forward. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm here and the reason why I'm doing Kingdom One Live. Um, and the it's, guests, I mean, some of the guests in terms of the guests that you have on the show, what specific background and what do you... What do you just a plethora okay. of backgrounds. Artists, um, uh, musical artists, for one thing. My co-host is the Tim Williams Project Band. So it's not just me. I do have a co-host. It's a five-piece band. Wow. And, um, and they're 
ordinary musicians who love music, and so they're, they play extraordinarily. So definitely, whoever tunes in, will be blessed. It, it's all live. They will definitely be blessed. Amen. Um, but as far as the, the different guests, mm -hmm. um, just a, a variety of backgrounds. Again, ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I have one gentleman who wrote his fo first book during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and he said the book had been in him for years, and mm -hmm. he started it five years ago, but the pandemic gave him the opportunity to really focus and complete it. Wow. And um, it's, it's kind of a self-help type mm -hmm. book, but very inspirational. And so when our guests tune in, that's actually going to be the first episode. Mm -hmm. That gentleman's name is uh, Thaddeus mm -hmm. uh, J. Garrett. Mm -hmm. And the name of his book is The um, Relentless Cultivation of You. What he's in, letting wow. people know that the they relentless. have. Relentless. Yeah, relentless. They, you have inside of you yes, all you that it takes. God put it there. Yeah, absolutely. But the pandemic pulled a lot of stuff out because I told people during the mm -hmm. pandemic, we, were, we had to pivot. Yes. Quickly, because when things happened, mm -hmm. it was all of a sudden, you know, we were in the world, we were out there and about, then all of a sudden, everyone was basically homebound. You were isolated. Yes. So I tell people, if you didn't learn something new during the pandemic, if you didn't develop a skill set, grow closer to God, do some things differently, you had the time. Absolutely. It slowed you down. You had no options. I mean, no other choice. Yeah, for a few months, you weren't going anywhere. A while. Yes. It was isolation. But, you know, this came out of the pandemic mm -hmm. because I, I pivoted from living the single life to a program that expands the audience. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the singles have a, a, a place, a very, you know, close place in my heart as mm -hmm. far as I will still do segments and probably programs where will be about singles additions mm -hmm. and will be focused on the single population. But... Um, it's, it's just a variety of people, all ages, all stages of life, a variety of people that I will be talking to, as well as some musical guests, mm -hmm. along with the band. And so it's definitely going to be live. It's going to be exciting. And most of all, it's going to be uplifting. Because people need that, I think, in the era we're in, people need to be <clears throat> encouraged. Yes. Because there's so much going on in the world today, and people get sucked into so many different social media, different right. things. We, people get pulled into some of those things, and it zaps who they are, but they have to realize that God is their source. Absolutely. And, and you know, the wonderful thing about it is we're living in God's kingdom. Yeah. People need to know that there are benefits, and there's excitement. There's joy, there's laughter. It's live to be a part of God's kingdom. But you got to know your benefits. That means you need to spend time in the Word. In the Word. You need to know oh, what girl, the Word says. Six books has uh, full you, of benefits. You need to know what the Word says. Absolutely. Because it can happen to what the benefits are. It's like when you work for a job, if you don't know the benefits you have as in that place of employment, you right. can't take advantage of them. Absolutely. The Bible is the manual. It says basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what the Bible stands for. I love that. I'm going to have to write that you down. write that down. <laughs> I saw that years ago. It just stuck. Basic instructions before leaving earth because everything you need uh -huh. is in the Bible. Uh-huh. Basic instructions to live on earth, yes. too. So. Yes, exactly. But Believe people have to spend time there and get to know what they have so they can tap into that. And Absolutely. I think what the pandemic did is that it caused people to do a lot of shifting. Yes. It, it caused a lot of pivoting because that was the word. People were pivoting very quickly in terms of having to do things differently because all of a sudden we were thrust into a new world. It didn't catch God by surprise. It caught right. us by surprise. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so many times people say, well, if this had been done or if that had been done, we would, we would be out of the, the pandemic by now. But you know what? Like you said, it didn't take God by surprise. God knew all this. He said, God shut the, not just the USA, shut the world down. And when you look back over, <laughs> uh -huh. I, mean, I don't know about you, when I look back over my life, whenever I've gone through personal crisis, I can always see God in it. And it's just been an opportunity for him to advance me from one stage in life to another. It's, it slowed you, what it did for everyone, it slowed everyone down. Yes. And I think in that pause, in that slowing down period, pause, it gives you a chance to reflect refresh, renew, replenish. It gives you a chance Absolutely. to look at some, some things differently because you had to slow down. Absolutely. You know, we were talking earlier about that, the messy middle. <laughs> <laughs> when Ooh. you own that road to success. Yes. And then sometimes you get in the middle. And so when you, like you look at a, a graph and you see that arrow pointing up, but then the middle, there's all types of U-turns. 
And so it's a messy middle, but it's a necessary middle mm -hmm. so that when you get on the other side of that, mm -hmm. you know that no other person could have brought you through but the Lord. Amen. That's if you stick with it, because sometimes Absolutely. in that messy middle, as you call it, sometimes mm -hmm. people quit. Yes. Sometimes people get frustrated, they get tired, they just see it shouldn't be this hard. Well, guess what? I tell people the entrepreneurial walk right. is a walk of faith. Absolutely. And that line is not straight. Just, that messy middle is real. It, it is. That's for when you sure. really have to go back to your faith and say, Lord, I know you brought me here, you gave me the vision, you will mm -hmm. give me the provision. And then the wonderful thing about it, too, is sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's important to love what you do. You might be doing something that you don't really like, but just love it. Love what you do until you can do what you love. And I tell people, when you love what you do, you never work another day in your life because it's not work. Girl, give me a high five in the air. <laughs> we do. I like that. I like when, that. When you love what you do, you don't work. I tell people, when you love what you do, you never work another day in your life. When you're operating in God's purpose for your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. It's, you don't do, it's sweatless victory because he's doing the work through you. Yes. Yes, indeed. It's important to tap into that. And, and just to know that God can do immeasurably more than we can ask or think some, uh, some versions of the Bible say, or imagine through the power that is at work with in us through Christ Jesus. He's waiting on us to just trust yes, him. Yes, yes. He wants total trust, and sometimes we have our own independent mind. Girl, we only have one life to live. But people want to do what they want to do, and God yes. says go left, but I always go right. Mm, yeah. And so then you go right. Well, look, been there, done that. Yeah. I know all about it. <laughs> so we all have done it. You know, the Holy Spirit <laughs> say, go this way. You're like, well, you know, I think I should go this way. Go this way, because it's, you know, clearly we just, uh -huh. we, our flesh wants what the flesh wants. And you know what? Once we bump our heads, then we're like, <laughs> okay, God, we get so nervous, we get so afraid. Okay, Lord, what, whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to do. But I just thank God for the, the lessons Ooh. that I have learned. I just thank him for the opportunities to just, you know, every day, thank you, Lord, for brand new mercies this day. Yes. Because he has just brought me, I mean, it's been 10 years since I worked here at TV 57. Mm -hmm. And so to be back with a newfound vision yes. of Kingdom One Live, I'm just so excited about it because I do believe it's God. My prayer has been, okay, God, is this you? Am I just doing, am I just making up something? Mm -hmm. And then he just kind of reminds me of times that he has spoke to me in his still quiet voice. Mm -hmm. Yes, Deborah, this is what you're supposed to be doing right now. He's ordering your steps. He's ordering And if my we steps. listen to him and we follow his, what he tells us to do, we're going to be on the right path. It's when we decide to do what we want to do because we have our permissive will. Absolutely. But it's not his perfect will. Absolutely. Because broadcasting, for instance, when I was here and I got the opportunity to go back to my corporate job, I didn't want to leave it. But through prayer, it was just spoken to me you're going to go back. You, I, I actually had to move away to mm -hmm. Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So I was in Nashville, Tennessee for exactly a year and a half, just like I worked here for mm -hmm. a year and a half. But he spoke to me before going to Nashville, you're not going to be there for long. Mm -hmm. And broadcasting is what I want you to do. And so I moved there. I came back. And then shortly after getting back here, I started doing the half hour shows mm -hmm. of living the single life. And again, it addressed the issues and concerns of the adult Christian singles. I was excited about it, but I've come full circle and I'm back here now, Kingdom One Live. Kingdom One Live is here to stay because it's all about God's kingdom. It's all about glorifying him. Yeah, and winning people to getting souls into the kingdom. Absolutely. Because we want to make sure that as we are witnessing, as we are sharing, as we talk about sometimes, yes. you might be the only Bible some people ever read. This is true. Sometimes based on how you live, how you act, how you treat people. That's why Absolutely. I tell people, Lord, let me love the way you love. Yes. Not the way I love, but the yes. way you love. Let me yes. see the way you see. Let me hear with your ears that you hear. Because if I listen to what Nancy wants to do, sometimes we sometimes will miss it. For sure. Every time. So it is important <laughs> for us to just be in tune and listen to that still small voice when the Holy Spirit tells us to do something, to simply obey quickly. And that's what we have to get yes, back to, yes. obedience. That is a thing, obeying quickly. I mean, and that's why, you know, having that quiet time daily, it's so important to just, just be still and know that he is God and, and take that time every morning in prayer, devotion, mm -hmm. reading his word daily, getting his agenda before you step out of the house. And saying, Lord, thank you for choosing me. 
Thank you for choosing Hallelujah. me. Because that's good news. <laughs> he chose us. Yes. I mean, in the midst of our mess. He knew we'd be, as he said, he knew the plans he had for us. Yes. Before we yes. ever even set out, he knew the plans he had for us. So praise God for his faithfulness because he for is faithful. Faithfulness. He is an amazing father. He is an amazing God. So we just praise God for what he's doing in our lives. And so we're going to be going to the music set in a minute. And we're going to come back there and talk some more. So that's a good oh, you're, yes. you're, not gone, you're not through yet. So oh, I'm so excited. We're going excited. to the music set to Mika Patton singing Believe for It. Sing. She can sing. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was Hallelujah. Beautiful. Hallelujah. So back with you, Deborah. Yes. So, so as we think, we've been talking about a lot of things, but what were some lessons that you learned during the pandemic? Because I think that was a critical time for so many of us. 
What are oh, some lessons that you God. learned during the, the pandemic? You know, one lesson that I learned is that I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. I mean, because I pretty much stayed in isolation for quite a while. I have, where I live, I have one sister as far as family here, and she's married. And so um, her husband has, you know, high blood pressure, and she was like, you can't come over here because I don't, <laughs> you've been out to the grocery stores too much. You can't come over here and visit us. So I would talk on the phone some, but uh, I just realized, okay, I'm, I'm fine here alone. I mean, I did some, I did do some, some phone ministry, <laughs> mm -hmm. but for the most part, I was home with myself, spending some time with the Lord. Um, you know, I ended up doing some cooking and I work from home at that time too. Mm -hmm. So of course that kept me busy for at least eight hours out of the day. But having um, a position that I'm primarily, you know, working out in the field, it right. was still kind of a switch to having to be at home. So I just learned that I'm a lot stronger. I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. And it's just gave, given me an opportunity to do a lot of soul searching, Ooh. to even <laughs> dig in a little deeper as far as, you know, who I am and God and what it is he wants me to do. Yeah. I think a lot, I mean, I think there was a time for a lot of people to get stronger in the, their walk with God because yes. when we had the time to spend with God because you were, a lot of us were in isolation. We were not around a lot of people. And right. what we found out, what I found out in working with a lot of clients that I work with is that some people didn't like the isolation. They didn't like themselves because sometimes people were masking busyness right. in terms of dealing with other issues. And then when they had to stop and put on, they were placed on pause, that showed up everything. Right. And so everything came to light, everything came to surface. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, through that, a lot of things were birthed. Okay, you came back into doing what you want to do with your kingdom one. Things right. happened, you, a lot Absolutely. of things were birthed during that time. Absolutely. I, I mean, and, and there was just a, a whole lot going on in the world. So it was yes. a lot to think about, a lot to meditate about. It was a lot to, um, you know, just to make sure that the relationship, the horizontal relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. is intact, as well as forgiveness as Ooh. it relates to other people and interactions and just different things that you've seen going on in the world during the pandemic. So, you know, God just, I think he strengthened us all in those areas. And you said a critical piece, forgiveness. Forgiveness. That is yes, such indeed. a critical <clears throat> thing that people have to do. You forgive people. Yes. Because you want God to forgive you. Absolutely. I, I you. mean, the thing about it is you can't think that you're going to have a successful life and you're hold, harboring any type of bitterness toward anyone else. So it just gave, it gave me a lot of time to soul search and to let go of some things that I may have thought I let go of. Mm -hmm. But, you know. And that soul searching, <clears throat> everything is sorted out because there was so yes. much time to really think and you think and you yes. think. You're like, oh, wow, that was there. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I mean, you kind of <coughs> went back to things from uh, grade school and, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and journaling, you know, journaling about some things of the past in order. It's kind of like therapeutic. Mm -hmm. So it was a therapeutic opportunity, too. So, so a lot just, of things people could do in terms of that even people can do now still because yes. we're still in this new, whatever this new normal is. Yes. This new hybrid model. I said it's going to be the hybrid. Trying to find our way. Yeah, the time of the hybrid. Trying to find our way. Yep. Yes. But I'm excited about it. And I, I'm glad we're on this side of the pandemic. <laughs> and um, it's just an exciting time, especially we're in the midst of, it feels like spring, although mm -hmm. I know we have a few more weeks of winter. So I'm excited about the, the extra sunny days, like the one that we had today. Mm -hmm, yeah. And many sunny days this past week. And then the launching of your show. So tell people yes. how they can reach you, because I know as they're watching, how can people reach you and know more about you? And even, you, again, tell them when your show airs and all that. So tell them again how they can reach you. They can reach me on KingdomOneLive.com. The same as the show, KingdomOneLive.com. I, I just look forward to hearing from, you know, potential viewers. Uh, definitely whenever we're in the midst of the program, when it airs at 10 p.m. on Wednesday, you can weigh in on the, the conversations. And through Facebook, Kingdom One Live on Facebook, Kingdom One Live on Instagram, and Kingdom One Live on YouTube. 
and also just send a note through the website, kingdomonelive.com. Okay, good. So take the next two minutes and just encourage someone, maybe someone who's watching tonight, who has been through some difficult periods and they're really trying to find them. We just take the next two minutes, look into the camera and just encourage someone. Okay, thank you. You know, we only have one life to live. You can get kind of caught up in the, in the midst of the messy middle that I mentioned earlier before, but just keep in mind, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And so in the midst of the, the goals that you have, just know that God, just keep your eyes on him. He's gonna help you through whatever that maze is, whatever that web that even if you tangled it yourself, you gotta forgive yourself as well as forgive others. God can strengthen you. He will forgive you. He will give you the strength to forgive yourself, forgive others, and also give you the mind to be able to write those goals down, write the vision, make it plain so that others can run with it. And so you will know exactly what you want others to run with. And then when you get on that other side, that other side is success, that other side is significance, that other side is living life on purpose, doing what God has called you to do, you and only you. And so it's wonderful. It's a time, and, and celebrate, even in the midst of it, even in that messy middle time, celebrate, celebrate. Every day is a celebration when you wake up. Thank God for brand new mercies today and each and every day of your life. Seek ye first his kingdom and all of his righteousness and everything that you have need of will be added unto you one day at a time. Amen. Thank you for that word. That was, I know they were blessed by that. So we thank God for you being a part of the show today. We thank God for your message. It's over already. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're in the final minute. Yes, time went by fast. It goes okay. by very, very quickly. But just to encourage people just to keep going into journals, to do things, to just know that every day you wake up is a, is a gift. That's why Absolutely. they call it the present to unwrap yes. and enjoy because God loves us. So may God bless your show. Thank I'm looking you. forward to checking it out this week myself so Thank I can you. see you, Kingdom One Live. So I'm looking forward to watching it and weighing in. Yes. And so glad that sure. our paths cross. It's not by accident. There's no accidents in the kingdom. So I know we are just blessing you. May God bless you. Continue to enlarge your territory. Now we're going to go back you. to the music set. Tamika Patton, God Won't.
heavy. Woo, that was, God won't let you fail. God is on your side. I'm just going to give you some encouraging words. As I listen to that song, God won't let you fail. You got to believe in him. You got to trust him. And what God was just telling me today is I was looking at Proverbs 3. We all know that verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And when you look at the word trust, that means that's complete reliance on someone. We need to have complete reliance on God. That means we have to get our minds out of the way. Our mind wants to do what the mind wants to do because our flesh wants what the flesh wants. When God says trust him, trust him with all, that means we have to give everything to God and we have to get ourselves out of the way because we want what we want. But is that what God wants? So if you're watching tonight, sometimes you've been doing what you want to do, but it's what God wants you to do. Learning how to trust him totally and completely. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. All is everything. There's nothing left after all. So God wants you to trust him with everything that he has because he knows the end from the beginning. He knows what's going to happen two minutes from now. We have to learn how to rely on him because that's what trust is, relying on what God can do. And if we rely on him, as we heard the song, God won't let you fail if you trust him, if you believe in him, if you know that you know that who he is in your life. That means you have to have a relationship with him. You need to spend time with him. Spend time in his word. So you know what the word says. So that when the trials come, because the trials will come. The challenges will come. They will come. If you talk about that messy middle, they will come. The question is in the messy middle, do you trust God? Don't quit. Don't stop. Keep going. As my pastor says, you just got to have the faith to keep going. Never quit. Never give up on your faith. Keep moving forward. It is so important. In this era we're in now, you have to trust more than ever before. That means you've got to rely on God. You have to get yourself out of the way and say, Lord, what is it you would have me to do? What, would you want, what do you want me to do? Because he says his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So sometimes we think that we have the answer. We think we have the solution. We think we have the remedy. Because we're intellectual. We can think through things. We've got degrees and all that. And our degrees mean nothing because God knows everything. So when God tells you to go left and you want to go right, just go the way God tells you to go. Because it's all about obedience. Do you obey God quickly when he gives you the word? Or do you sometimes let your mind say, well, I'll do that later on. God says, call someone now. Well, I'll call them later. Who are we to determine when we need to call? When God tells you to do it then, do it then. I'm learning that to do what God tells you to do in the moment because delayed obedience is still disobedience. We want the blessings of God. Sometimes obeying God, there's, when you obey God quickly, God, there, is, there might be a blessing right around the corner because you obeyed, but if you delay that breakthrough, we say being put on the shelf, you may not have to wait another year, six months, whatever it is, because you didn't obey. So God is saying trust him in this season. We, trust him. we need to be trusting him all the time, getting out of the way, just saying, Lord, how do you want me to move? What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to talk to? He will direct your steps. He's an amazing God. He loves us. He chose us. I thank God for choosing me. He didn't have to, but he did. So I thank God for choosing me. You should thank God for choosing you, for being a part of the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. So we want to make sure that our walk, that our, the walk we have, the things we do, that our walk is epitomizing the walk of Christ, that we see with the eyes of, of Christ, that we love the way he wants us to love, not the way we want to love, but the way he wants us to love, that we do things that are pleasing to him. How can I be a blessing to someone today? How can I be the answer to someone's prayer today? What do you want me to do, Lord? How can I extend kindness? How can I represent you well so when people see me, they see you? The light of Christ is in me because they see you in me. So we want to make sure that we're trusting God, that we're believing God, that we're getting out of our way, that we're saying, Lord, whatever you would have me to do, I'm willing and able to do it. Whatever you want me to do, I will do it. I'm committed to you. I'm submitted to you. You have your way in my life. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. The great I am. You are an amazing God. You're an incredible God. We had a thousand tongues. We couldn't praise you enough because you are faithful. You are faithful. You love us. You are so good. You're full of mercy and grace. So I just want to encourage you as you're watching tonight, realize that you want to trust God with everything that you have because God wants that. When you trust him, that's saying, Lord, I love you. I trust you. God wants the very best for you. Just know that he wants the best for you. And as we heard the song, God will never let you fail when you trust him. So just remember that. So praise God for that brief exhortation for you. So we're going to go to the music set with Tamika Patton. Fill me up. With your arms wide open, I don't do 
We're back on the set now, and we have the wonderful, amazing, anointed Amen. girl, Tamika Patton. Girl, you can sing. <laughs> and I say, you can sing. Thank you so I much. Mean, when you say God will never fail, <sighs> I, mean, the, I mean, your voice. You can, I mean, I was like, up here, like, I want you to just get up and run around. But I'm like, I know Joanna would Praise get mad God. with me, so I'm going to sit in my chair. <laughs> Praise God, that means so much. I'm so happy to be here um, to share with you all this evening. And God won't let you fail. Uh, I recorded that song a couple years ago, and um, sometimes, you know, you got to remind yourself of messages that the Lord gives you for someone else, and that's been a constant. Um, God won't let you fail. And sometimes when you're going through things, I'm sure, oh, yeah. you know, this, when, you, when you're walking through it, I'm sure some songs are birthed out of your, oh, yeah. your struggle and your pain. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Lord, fill me up. Uh, a friend of mine was uh, dealing with some really challenging moments in his life, and he went to the studio just to kind of worship and find some peace. And he found an instrumental track that another friend of ours had made, and he sat there and began to worship, and the Lord gave him those words. And literally, they were the words on the tablets of my heart. And mm -hmm. he called and said, Tamika, listen, the Lord just gave me this song. What do you think you can do with it? And when I heard those lyrics, I just broke down because I'm like, this is me. Mm -hmm. This is 
this is what I feel. How did he give the message to you? Never you mind. Give it to me. Let me sing it because I have to get this out. And so that's been a song no matter where we minister that song. Um, Lord, fill me up. We, we've all been in a broken place. Yes. We've all been in a, a yes. low place where we feel like we know God loves us. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, the enemy is doing his job to make us believe that he doesn't, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I, I'm just so blessed by the lives that that song has impacted and been a blessing to. And it continues to be a blessing to me every time I minister it. Yeah, and you minister with such power, the anointing. As if you can sing, people can sing, but you're an anointed singer. Amen. Praise God. Well, it costs a lot for the oil. Uh, it's a price. Yes, but but it's worth it when you sing and God is so pleased with what you do. Amen. That's. I mean, that's that is why that is my supernatural B12. That is my fuel. Mm. I want the Lord to be pleased. Um, I want Him to be able to trust me with assignments. So I try to do um, my very best. I take my ministry seriously. That's something I don't play with. I love music. I love mm -hmm. all the creative stuff. I'm a fun girly girl. <laughs> bling, bling. Yes, I love all of that. But when it comes down to that life death decision that mm -hmm. the Lord is trusting you with the assignments yes. to bring the word through song. That weighs heavy on me. I take that very seriously. Because sometimes your singing might bring people to Christ. Because sometimes, sometimes it may be the preaching, Absolutely. the word that's given. Sometimes it's a song. You hear a song, and that song ministers to you because of where you are. Absolutely. And sometimes there are no accents. Sometimes we hear songs on the radio that we need to hear in that moment because of yes. what we're dealing with. And God orchestrated such that we can have a victory by hearing that song in that moment. Definitely. I think that's why worship leaders, recording artists, psalmists, uh, well, if you're a psalmist, you're supposed to understand by that point. So I'll say recording artists. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can get caught up in the commercialism and the marketing part of it and miss the ministry part. That's how much of a responsibility it is when I touch that mic. And that's how uh, seriously I mm -hmm. approach it because it is a life and death situation. Right. You don't know who's listening. You don't know who has said, you know what? If I don't hear something from you, God, today, that's mm -hmm. it. I'm mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, let me pick my daughter, Tamika. Sing that song. Yes. And I decide that I want to perform instead of minister. Mm. Then what? That person may not get what they need because uh -huh. you are doing showmanship. Come on. So I've held up your breakthrough because mm -hmm. I decided to audition when instead of ministering. So that's how real it is for me. I love yes. to have fun. I love the groove. I love the bass line. I love the percussion. I love all of that. And music is universal. And mm -hmm. we can still have fun in mm -hmm. Jesus. But when it comes time to press in and yes. consecrate and hear from God what to share, yes. not just pick random songs because that's what's in the top 10 or that's what's being played on the radio. Mm -hmm. Those songs are awesome. But perhaps the Lord will have you reach back and just sing a hymn. Mm -hmm. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he wants you to reach back and, yes. and, and, and sing something from your spirit. Mm -hmm. Like he'll just give you the words in that moment. So just try to be sensitive. I just tell other worshipers and, and psalmists, I just encourage them. Mm -hmm. Just try to be sensitive to the spirit so that you're not caught in that box of what everybody else is doing. I always want to be in the, in the realm and in the move of what God is doing now. Amen. Not what he did yesterday. Ooh, that, that now. Faith is now. Come on. That now faith. Yes. Hmm. Amen. Because that's how quickly he can do it. He can do it for you. Just like that. I'm telling Just you, like that's that. how awesome he is. Yes. He is an incredible guy. So how long have you been doing this? I just started yesterday. I, no. <laughs> when, when, amen. And God has just graced you. He's, yes, he's he put did. his anointing on you that you're able to do like th what you do. Yes, he did. I, I'm so blessed. I come from a... Uh, a legacy of anointed folks in my family, mm -hmm. family of singers. My grandfather, Bernard Patton, was a quartet singer with the Gate City Singers. And so I come from a house full of uh, musicians. Mm -hmm. My mom and her sisters, my grandmother, whole family um, came up in a house that heard gospel, of course. But I was also uh, exposed to jazz. I was also mm -hmm. exposed to classical. I was also exposed to country. Mm -hmm. So my taste in music is a little eclectic. Mm -hmm. uh, gospel is who I am, mm -hmm. but music is, is just, that's my passion. So um, I started professionally singing at 15 years old, mm -hmm. uh, attended the only school that matters, the Philadelphia High School for the Creative and Performing Arts, and that was just a, a natural choice for mm -hmm. me. Um, got to actually uh, just really experience some things uh, in my youth that 
you know, adults, vets that have been in the industry for years didn't have the opportunity to mm -hmm. do so. My first background uh, opportunity, professional background opportunity was with like, Phyllis Hyman, Patti LaBelle, like I did tours like that coming out the gate. And that's the favor that God Amen. showed me, you know, as a teenager. So I've been doing it about five minutes now and it's been a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your list of people that you have, that you've played with. I mean, the list is like, uh, you've been with some great God artists. Good. Of Yolanda, Cece, Kurt Carr, Ty Tribute. Uh, oh my goodness, uh, let us see. Uh, my, I mean, God has really just been, that's why I have no choice but to give him all mm -hmm. that I have because he's given me everything that I have. And he's given you that voice to minister to people, to, to help people to work through issues of life. Because sometimes when you hear a song that is anointed that just that blesses you, like fill me up and God will never fill. When you hear those songs, it's like, it reminds you that God says, you know, if you're, I'm with you. Absolutely. I'm with you. I'm on your team. Absolutely. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Come on. Absolutely. I think that, uh, yeah, I, people always say, well, how do you sing like that? Where do you, where do you draw from? Well, my well uh, runs deep. We've had, we've been dancing this dance together for a minute. And I'm so glad that I came to know the Lord early mm -hmm. in life, mm -hmm. that I didn't have to find him as an adult. Um, and so uh, him trusting me to share the gift that he has given me in, in the ways and on the platforms that he has blows my mind every time. When I think I've reached a certain plateau, he just goes, nope, not yet. Higher, not elevation, yet. Nope, higher. <laughs> and so um, having recently, we recently relocated here to Atlanta. I'm a Philly girl, uh, but we recently relocated here to Atlanta, served in ministry in Virginia for six years. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord allowed one of my dreams to come true. This has been a dream since I was 16 years old and I'm here. Praise God. And I mean, just being here this short time all of the doors that have opened, all of the love that we have been shown. And it's not even about networking because I believe in relationships, but right. the folks that God has allowed to cross my path and be a blessing, mm -hmm. uh, they don't mind sharing the wealth. They've attained, they've, you know, reached goals and, and reached platforms in their life and they don't mind reaching back. And helping. Help some and that's what it's all about. It's like everything that will happen to you and will happen in our life is going to happen through a relationship. Yes. And it's our responsibility. If we can help bring another person up to be an open door for them and they are able to do it, yeah. why not do that? Why not? I want to be, we're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. So that's why I want to get to those, those dreams and goals that, that I've prayed about since I was a kid because I want to help someone else. I want to be a blessing to someone else. So what would you tell someone, maybe someone who's young, who's watching tonight, because it's not by accident. I don't think there are no accidents. So if someone's watching tonight who maybe wants to say, well, she can sing and, you know, she's been blessed and all that. What would you say to someone who is maybe starting out as a vocalist and they have a desire to be a psalmist or an artist and do some things you do? What would you suggest? that they do? Hmm. Well, that's a loaded question uh, because psalmist and artist, yep, it's two different. Mm -hmm. And my mother would always tell me, you know, is it a good thing or is it a God thing? Ooh. Is it <laughs> career or is it ministry? Mm. So if you know that the Lord is calling you to be a psalmist, just be prepared to go through some things uh, because you can't sing what you haven't experienced. So mm. your well has to be created if you're going to be a psalmist. Mm -hmm. You're going to shed some tears. You're going to be alone. You're going to, you know, it's a lonely walk. It's not, I always say, real ministry isn't glamorous. So get prepared to, um, to just deal with some storms and, and, and get prepared to know God in a real and personal way if that is your desire to be mm -hmm. a psalmist. If you just want to be an artist, that's amazing also. I say don't be discouraged. Be the best you be a fingerprint, mm. stay unique. Don't let the industry and commercialization change you. If your voice is raspy, stay raspy. If your voice is high, stay high. If you're, if you're a thick girl and you like your curves, keep your <laughs> curves. If you're a skinny girl and God bless your whole heart and you don't want to eat and that works for you, stay skinny. But don't let anyone change who you are. That, that has been, because you're gonna hear a lot of no's before yes. you hear that one yes. And it only takes one yes to change your whole life. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna encourage you as someone who has heard a whole lot of no's, a whole lot of, oh, if you were just a little bit this or just a little bit that or just a little bit, at the end of the day, stay Stacy. 
or Tommy or Billy or Jenny or whoever you stay true to you but Amen. most importantly Amen. stay true to God Amen. and your talents will take you far but only God can take you all the way Ooh, that's girl you preach you talk about being your authentic self. It's like what you said is like your Amen. authentic self. I told people I have a Nancyism. Do you because everybody else is taken? That's it. God That's made it. you an original. The fingerprint. God made you an original. Yes. There's no one else quite like you. And they always ask, who do you, you know, who do you pattern your sound after, or who do you want to sing like? And I'm like, Tamika. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with her. I'm happy with her. Because God has given me a gift, so I'm yeah. happy. And you can be inspired. Yes. By voices, because I, I've absolutely been in the in the presence of some of the greats yes um and i take little little snacks little nuggets mm -hmm. you know but never a carbon copy mm -hmm. never try to recreate someone else's journey because i can never walk in their shoes but you take what they you take pieces of it and then you put tamika's spin on yes. you put her there stamp you, on, you put tamika's stamp on there say yeah i'm putting tamika's stamp this is who i am this is who i am and i think that's the beauty that you can look at what people do and admire it and yeah. say, that's their walk. Mm -hmm. But I like this piece, I like part two, I like part three over here, and then I'm gonna put my spin on it and make it uniquely who I am. And I think that's what people have to get back to. Be uniquely you, you are an original. There's right. no one else like you. Absolutely. And God took the time. To make you. To create you. Why are you working so hard to change perfection? He created you exactly the way that he wanted you to be. Cause you're looking at social media, all this other crazy stuff out there. Which is, you know, it's so sad to say that so people are walking around here thinking that they really have friends <laughs> because they have 5,000 followers or 5,000 Facebook friends that could never hug you, don't really care what you're going through. I mean, unless you post something that kind of benefits them, mm -hmm. that's so sad yep. that we're that disconnected, yep. Yep. Um, that we don't build real friendships anymore. Those are the folks that are there for you in your in, good times, in your bad times, when you're ugly, when you're cute. They're there. They're there. So tell people how they can reach you. I want to make sure they know how to reach this anointed woman of God. Oh, so tell them, how they can, tell them how they can reach you. We're, we're about to wrap up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Easy to find. www.tamika with an A. T-A-M-I-K-A. Patton, P-A-T-T-O-N, music.com. Or Facebook at Tamika Patton Music. Instagram at Tamika Patton Music. And Twitter. Add Tamika Patton music. Easy to find. So I'm, I'm gonna start following you. Please do. And I answer back. I love to meet new people. So please message me, DM me some I'm saying, stuff. Do you remember me? I, I was your, your host on the land like you say, who, who are you? Never, <laughs> I'm just messing never. with you. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, you so much again for having me tonight. No, it's been a blessing. You, I mean, but your, your singing, I mean, I was just blessed by your singing, just what God is doing with you. And again, I know there's so much more God's gonna do with you because of your voice and how he wants to use you for the kingdom. Because we need Amen. people who are anointed singers who can work, who can usher in the spirit of God. Amen. Can usher in the glory. We need that because that's such that people are hurting and they need to know that God loves them. And I, as we wrap up, thank you again, Tamika. Thank you. Thank for you singing so tonight and then being a guest here on the set. We praise God for you as we're about to wrap up. But I know you've been blessed this evening. I know you have in terms of there's been a theme of trusting God in the messy middle that God is with you. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you to just realize that God will fill you up. In the midst of your pain, your struggle, God will fill you up because he loves you. So we thank you for tuning in tonight. We're here every Monday. We're here every, every night, Monday through Friday, Atlanta Live. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. See you next time.